absolutely and we got two world-class players world -class. On, on the line literally world-class players one we have seen already uh, let me drop the name it's Marcus Stutter uh, who is 6-0 up versus his good friend Barish Akshos also 6-0 and there's yeah. a lot on the line right now there's a lot of the line they are very very close friends they team build together yeah. uh, in the world championships they were at the they came top eight both of them while well, Marcus did come top four but they were using the team the same team because they were team building together and you know they've they've always been such great friends and you know you can always match them up against each other that they you could say yeah. historically the best Germans played probably absolutely absolutely and we can have a look at uh, how they feel right now. Here we see Marcus Stutter. He's looking pretty focused right now. Uh, he's not impressed by playing a real good friend. They even share a flat, I heard. Uh, up versus Barish. Here we see him. Uh, he's focused as well. I don't know. We didn't see Barish's team yet. Uh, though we have seen Marcus' team. Yes, and to remind everyone, Marcus's team did consist of Arcanine, Garchomp, Tapu Koko, Gengar, Gastrodon and Celesteela. And uh, we are going to see a interesting team we kind of had on the stream already. Consisting of Tapu Bulu, Arcanine, Gastrodon, Gigalith, Salamence and Celesteela. And this is going to be really interesting. I'm really looking forward into this matchup. Uh, we are having two Celestinos on the line. Uh, players were a bit worried, have been a bit worried about uh, facing Celestinos on each other, but uh, we haven't seen the infamous Celestina war so far, have we? I mean, we did see it in the last round, but I think in this round in particular, um, it's all going to be about who can knock out the Celestina and totally remove that win condition. Uh, Marcus does have the Arcanine and the Topa Tapu Koko, which could get rid of the Celestina very, very easily. Meanwhile, um, Barish uh, does only have the Arcanine uh, to get rid of uh, um, Marcus's Celestina, but, um, you know, uh, Barry's team, which consists of Tapu Bulu, Arcanine, Gigalith, Celestila, Salmons and Gashrodon. Not much on there, apart from the Arcanine, that can get rid of Celestila. Uh, we do see the Gashrodon mirror as well, yeah. which is always awkward with the wonderful Storm Drain ability that Gashrodon does have. Absolutely, absolutely. And what I, what I like about Barry's team is, uh, he plays Salamence, which in this format usually is played heavily trained towards the special side, so it can fire off Draco Meteors, uh, potentially Hydro Pumps and uh, some Flamethrower flame and uh, Fire Blast as well, which can heavily damage uh, Marcus Celestina, but yeah. we will see. We will see, and we are going to be jumping into the game very, very soon. The Gengar, uh, the Simons is obviously quite interesting with the Intimidate yeah. as well. I think Intimidate is going to be a big one which will especially bulk up the Celestina. But we are going to be jumping into the game very soon and we're going to be seeing leads of Tapu Koko and Gengar from Marx's side of the field setting up that electric surge probably with the electric terrain and we see an Arcanine Gigalith in return from uh, from Barish so we are going to see the Sandstorm come up, the Intimidate activate and the electric surge but the electric surge is going to activate first obviously indicating that the Arcanine is not choice guard. Absolutely, absolutely and um, I think well Barish did make a, a pretty good lead here. Gigalith gets its special defense boosted by Sandstorm, so it doesn't have to uh, fear to take too much damage from Gengar nor from Tapu Koko. Arcanine has potential to snarl around, uh, so it shuts down kind uh, of the potential from Tapu Koko and Tapu Koko and Gengar. And if, like Barish, got Tapu Bulu in the back, it's key to shut down that Gengar in the first place. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, the Tapu Bulu it really does not want to face off against the Gengar, uh, but it will be able to get rid of the electric terrain, making sure that the Tapu Koko does as little damage as possible. I think we might be seeing the Tapu Bulu come in, but the Gengar is obviously always a threat, so maybe yeah. Barish will be a little bit preservative on term in terms of uh, which Pokemon he does decide to switch out. But we are going to see Marcus switch out his beloved Gengar in favor of the Gastrodon 
um, not risking a potential uh, a potential big attack going onto that Arcanine. But we do see the Gigalith protecting, maybe a little bit worried about, about a Will-O-Wisp or something of that sort. But we do see the Nature's Madness from the Tapu Koko onto the Arcanine. It's going to do exactly half damage and... Uh, yeah, pretty much half damage, but we Whoa. do see the Zay move Whoa. from Banish side of the field. It's going to activate onto the Arcanine. We are probably going to be seeing a um, Blazing Inferno, I believe that Absolutely. move is called. <laughs> Inferno Overdrive, that's the move. And it's going to uh, go into something, and whatever, is, whatever it goes into is going to not take it very well, except for maybe that Gastrodon, which does resist the Inferno Overdrive. It's going to not do very much at all. That is a very, very bulky Gastrodon. It's either a very bulky Gastrodon or the Arcanine is not that offensive as it seems through the Sack Crystal. Uh, and now, while Marcus made, made a really good switch, he, he like really fears there may be a Tapabulo in the back, uh, there may be Celestila in the back, so Gengar is not not that bad of a pick versus uh, Celestila if it either runs Thunderbolt, Taunt, will o -Wisp. Let it be whatever you want. We didn't see all moves from uh, Marcus, and we see a switch out. Um, Barish takes out Blue, yeah. Arcanine and brings in Tapabulu because he's free to do so and to fire off a big attack next turn. Yeah, this is a wonderful switch from Barish. Um, he loses really nothing here, but the this charge is going to come out. This might ruin Barish's plans in the long run, but we don't see any full paralysis. We do see a Toxic onto that Gigalith. So the Gigalith is going to be taking residual damage every single turn. It's going to increase and increase and slowly do more damage. But we do see the Avoid on the Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko avoids the Stone Edge. It was Whoa. going to take a lot of damage from that Gigalith. Um, not quite sure if that would have knocked out, but yeah, wonderful play by Barish. Absolutely, absolutely. And now we got a night. Pretty, pretty open situation. Uh, do you think Marcus got Celestina in the back? This would be like the situation to switch it in in favor of Gastrodon. That is very true, and he also wants to probably preserve his own Tapu Koko to make sure it doesn't faint. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow. Two high class players on the line. Oh, I really, I, re I really love the match already, and I wanted to know what both players brought to this match to be able to. I think, talk about. I think we are going to be seeing a whole load of defensive switches. Yeah, yeah, and Marcus already uh, put a counter on Gigalith, which is, which might come handy, come in handy later on. Uh, clever decision to go for Toxico was called on this one. Yeah, especially because with the Sandstorm, the Gigalith does get a big, big, big special defense boost. With the Toxic, that special de defense boost probably not necessarily negated, but when it takes more and more damage, it doesn't spend as much time on the field. But we do see time running out for Marcus there, and we just see the Gastron protecting from any potential horn leeches or something like that. And we see the uh, Tapu Koko Volt Switch into the Tapu Buu. It's going to take a little bit of damage, but most importantly, Marcus is going to, take, is going to get a switch, but can Barish punish this switch by targeting that slot and not targeting the Tapu Koko? We are going to see. Max is taking his time to really think about what Pokemon he really wants to put in. Um, we can guess that one of his Intimidate users, but we're going to see the Gengar, possibly because of its good Sludge Bomb matchup against the Tapu Buru. We do see the Wood Hammer into oh. the Gengar. This, might, this does make the focus out. This does way more damage than I thought it was going to do, but the Curse Body activates <laughs> that big one as well. Now he can't uh, Wood Hammer the Gastrodon. Do you see the Stone Edge onto the Gastrodon? I believe Barish was trying to catch some predictions. Absolutely, absolutely. As far as I know, Barish, He's always trying to make some reads, especially versus skilled players and, and versus players he knows. He studies them a lot. He knows that Marcus is a fan of defensive switching, having control, and, and Barish always tries to capitalize on that. And I think we're going to see some hard reads from Barish later on as well. Yeah, what do you think of that Gengar switching though? Was it a little bit too risky? I think so, I think so. You don't want to lose that Gengar. Uh, especially now there is a timer on Gengar because <laughs> the sandstorm is up and... Yeah, oh. but um, the big one there I suppose is the cursed body on the Tapu Bulu. Now Gashadon can sit there quite comfortably in front of the Tapu Bulu. Yeah, see, 
Burnish now, which was his tap of Ulu because of the cursed body not allowing him to, to Woodhammer. Um, but we do see a Celesteela come in. Probably not exactly what Marks wanted to see as he sludge bomb into the um, into the immunity slot there. The Gigalith does take a score from the from the Gastron quite nicely actually, and we do see a heavy stand pop into the Gengar just to finish it off and bring Marcus down to three Pokemon only. The cursed body activates again, but I don't think that's extremely relevant. No, it's still got some. Uh, rock type moves in the back, and uh, Heavy Slam is. You, you do not need Heavy Slam versus uh, either Gastrodon uh, nor versus a Tapu. Um, not named Tapu Lele, of course. <laughs> really yeah. curious what he's going to send in now. My guess is probably going to be the Tapu Coco to uh, reset the electric field, um, but then again, Bakish does have the Tapu Bulu in the back can, to pretty much counter that play immediately. Yeah. But we do see the Tapu Koko from Marcus's side of the field. Yeah, as, as you already said, Tapu Koko enters the field and uh, now that we all know that this Tapu Koko got Vault Switch, there are pretty neat options right now, mm. right Matteo? Yes, the Vault Switch does allow the Tapu Koko to hit one of the Pokemon and switch back out again, especially if the Tapu Bulu is to switch in. Absolutely, absolutely. And then again, he can reset the Terrain uh, later on again and this is... That's why... I, Wall switch, wall switch uh, Tapu Koko is like a really neat idea, especially against the, yeah, the Terra yeah. Wars. Uh, I really love wall switch Tapu Koko exactly for that reason. I think it's also it works especially well on uh, choice spec sets where you might not, you're not entirely sure what you, what move you want to lock yourself into. So you might as well vault switch, get out of there yeah. immediately, and then uh, be able to choose uh, lock yourself into a choice specs move the next turn you're out there. Yeah. But we do see the wide guard probably fearing the discharge. Gigalith does go for wide guard. Is it going to protect against the discharge? We don't see a discharge. We see a straight forward switch into that Celestia that's going to do a, a lot less damage than I thought yeah. it was going to do, actually. But Same. <laughs> the Tapu Koko does switch out probably in favor of an Arcanine or something of that nature. We do see the guard Guard Um But maybe we're just going to see the uh, Celestia go for the Leech Seed. Oh. It misses. It misses, that's big, but the score does go into the Celestia. Does we do we see the burn? We do not see a burn. And the Gigalith is still sitting there, it's sitting very pretty. Absolutely, absolutely. And still Tapu Bulu in the back. Gigalith poison, taking huge amount of damage damage from the poison. Okay, it's not sitting so pretty then. <laughs> <laughs> we got guard jump, as far as I know, we have seen the Sacristan guard jump, right? In the last yes. match from Marcus, so this might be an option to uh, secure the knockout on uh, Gigalith. It'll uh, be a little bit too much, I would say. Um, but I guess Marcus could what Marcus could also do is try and predict some sort of switch in because he does have the disadvantage of number of Pokémon. But the Celesteela is sitting there, and it's if Marcus doesn't do something about it very very soon, the Celesteela is going to do Celesteela things really <laughs> and uh, ruin ruin Marcus's day. Yeah, absolutely. Not just meant it secures it in a way that it breaks protect mm -hmm. and uh, still does damage. Uh, but it uses wide guard instead. Yeah, we actually see the Gigalith use wide guard. I think both Pokemon have wide guard on this team, which is quite cool. Uh, we do see the Dragon Claw into the Gigalith. Makes a lot of sense, does knock it out. Uh, but the Tapu Bulu switch was a little bit risky there. Uh, the Celestia does go for the substitute. Now it's all a matter of whether this Gastrodon Scald can yeah. knock out the substitute. Will it be able to? Um, I think the game pretty much relies on this. It oh. does take the skull. That's huge for Barish. Absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. Guard jumps these days uh, usually run like Dragon Claw, Earthquake and Poison Chap to hit like Tapu Bulu so they can touch Celestina. Tapu Bulu comes in on uh, Barish's side on the field, healing every grounded Pokemon and um, powering up Dress type attacks. But that Bulu is probably in range of some poison jab or something. Oh, it's definitely in range of poison jab. I mean, Garchomp is very, very speedy. Uh, poison jab is going to do so much damage. We, what did we see in the back from uh, from Barish's side? I think we saw his own Gastrodon, did we? Or did we see something else? No, we saw the Arcanine. We saw the Arcanine. I'm quite sure because yeah. we saw the Z move go into it. Um, yeah. But uh, a a Arcanine switching is. Okay, uh, it could take the poison jab, but then again, you know, 
Backish is sort of on a timer. He does have the, the substitute still up with the Celestina, so Celestina is still his win condition. But we do see the Tapu Bulu switch out for the Arcanine. It's going to get a big Intimidate off onto that Guard Chomp. It doesn't have quite as much health as I thought he, he had in the back, so maybe a Poison Jab is going to put it into, into another Poison Jab uh, KO range. Yeah, absolutely. Or he just double targeted yeah. into it. But we see, like you already said, Celestina doing Celestina things. <laughs> Leech stealing the Gastrodon for some health back every round. And we see the Skull coming into the sub and finally probably going to break it. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So the substitute finally goes down. And uh, after we see every single Pokemon, apart from the Celestina, take uh, recovery damage, uh, recovery from the grassy terrain, we might be seeing something like a Tectonic Rage onto that Sarcanine, just to make sure it goes yeah. down. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, Leech Seed does go into the Gastron, um, does take a bit of damage to the Gastron, and it heals the Celestina right back up. That Celestina doesn't seem to have much HP, judging by how much HP it recovered from one yeah. simple Leech Seed. Um, but yeah, what do you think? What do you think of uh, Max's position here? Well, it, it all comes down to I think. Have a look at the clock, Matteo. We got like five minutes left, and this might be one of our first matches that really comes down to those seconds mm. uh, of who whoever has more Pokemon left. And uh, this is this is like a pretty rough matchup. Garchomp cannot touch the Celestina. Uh, it can Ar it can touch Arcanine though, uh, but we see Marcus withdrawing Gastrodon and uh, sending in Tapu Koko, setting up the Electric Terrain. And we do see oh. the Z move, the Z Tectonic Rage onto that Garchomp. I can't imagine any other target other than the Arcanine because the Arcanine, even if it protects, it will go down. It didn't protect yeah. though, so I can't really see it taking this Tectonic <laughs> Rage, even after the Intimidate. And yes, uh, goodbye Arcanine, it was a, <laughs> <laughs> a pleasure. To the core of the earth, and Arcanine does go down despite being a fire type, even though Tectonic Rage is, uh, Rage is a ground type move. Um, but we do see the Celestina take set up yet another substitute. Very frustrating, a little bit frustrating for Marcus, but I think Marcus does have this in the back because even without the electric terrain, because the Tapu Bulu is going to switch back in, um, Tapu Koko is still able to take the substitute out while the Poison Jab is able to knock out the Tapu Bulu. Yeah, yeah. Now we got a pretty good situation for Marcus. Uh, both Pokemon faster than uh, Barish's Pokemon, and both Pokemon really threatening those. Yeah, I think th this is pretty much a winning situation for Marcus. Uh, I think Barish might just want to scout out, uh, see if the Tapu Koko, uh, what he can find out about the Tapu Koko in terms of its bolt. Maybe he's going to see what heavy damage Heavy Stam can do to whatever Marcus might have in the back. Um, yeah. I guess that's Barish's play right now, but Marcus did play this one absolutely fantastically. Barish made some defensive switches. Marcus made some very risky switches, but they, I think they ended up paying out in the long run. Well, as we can see, as you can see, let's go through outs from Barish. I don't think there are too many. No. Uh, there is out of for Marcus not pressing Poison Jab into the Bulu, <laughs> but he probably will do. Uh, and we see the Volt Switch for Subbreaker, and we see the Poison Jab from Garchomp coming out. Yeah. Taking out the Bulu, and this secures the win for Marcus. Uh, we can see we can see Barish uh, in the at the bottom. Uh, he already... <laughs> and look at Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a breath. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Marcus. You, take, you just took a game off your, one of your best mates. Uh, you would be fine. <laughs> you won't be angry. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Barish can still scout out in terms of what damage he can do. Um, yeah. Maybe find out... The, do we Have we found out the Tapu Koko item? Um, did, we, did we see any life orb damage or any sorts? We, we, did, we did not see life orb damage, nor leftovers damage. I think it was Sandstorm, yeah, but the match was forfeited. Uh, Barish spare, uh, sparing us watching uh, Celestina on uh, go down to the Tapu Koko. We're very well played by Marcus. We are going to be, uh, we are going to be jumping into a game two, though. Um, what do you think Barish could do to really adjust to the situation? Well, looking at the teams, Barish got Tapu Bulu, Arcanine, Gastrodon, Gigalith, Salamence, and Celestila. On Marcus's side, there is not much uh, that, that takes key for, for
for the uh, Kika lift, for example, besides Guard Jump and uh, Gastrodon. So maybe it's key for Barish to take out those uh, by. Well, it's hard. It's I think I think the matchup is pretty pretty hard and pretty rough uh, for Barish. Barish, the Bulu doesn't. The Bulu gets scared by Gengar, Guard Jump, and Celestila. It cannot touch Celestila. Then we got yeah. Arcanine. Which uh, uh, may have like Will O Wisp, uh, Flamethrower. Exactly, the, ta the, the Tapu Bulu really struggles in this matchup, but he really does need it because he really does need something that can switch into uh, Marcus's very, very dangerous looking Tapu Koko. Um, but to recap on the teams, Marcus Stata has an Arcanine, a Guard Shop, Tapu Koko, Gengar, Gastron, and Celesteela, while Barishakos does have the Tapu Bulu, the Arcanine, the Gastrodon, the Gigalith, the Celesteela, and the Salamence. Well, after a second look on the teams, I think. Like, if if we take Gastrodon or Barish side as a win condition, well, it could be a win condition. I mean, Celestia is <laughs> pretty much known as the win condition Pokemon. <laughs> um, but we did see uh, one important thing that uh, Barish could note from the Gash from uh, from uh, Marx's Gastrodon is that the school doesn't quite knock out a substitute. No. And if you combine that with the fact that maybe um, uh, Barish can switch in his own um, own Gashadon, maybe uh, some Storm Jane shenanigans and power up his own Gashadon and Something maybe we can, yeah. <laughs> and here we got the leads. We got Arcanine and Tapu Koko on Marcus' side and Barish sends out another Arcanine and Gigalith setting up Sandstorm and Tapu Koko setting up Electric Terrain. Yes, we also see an Intimidate from both of these Arcanines. Uh, Barish's Arcanine is moving last, so this might either indicate the fact that uh, Barish lost a speed tie, or the fact that Marcus's uh, Arcanine is a little bit speedier than Barish's. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think it is the second one, because Marcus always likes to, to move first uh, when not playing Trick Room. Uh, well, pretty, again, again, there is uh, no bad lead on on either side of the field. Gigalith is uh, pretty comfortable there. Mm. Uh, and Marcus withdraws his Arcanine in favor of Garchomp and goes for a Vault Switch with his Tapakoko into the Arcanine and uh, now can choose. I think we might, we might see an Arcanine uh, come back in here, uh, which if we do see the Arcanine come back in, it will be an excellent uh, shuffling of Intimidates. But we do just see the Gastrodon, uh, maybe because uh, he doesn't want to take uh, uh, rock moves. Barish is furrowing his brow there. He's, uh, <laughs> he seems a bit confused by some of these plays, but the Toxic goes into the Gastrodon. That's quite big there, actually. Absolutely, absolutely. And we see a sad move coming from yeah. Gigalith. So we are going to wow. see a really strong rock move. I believe this is the Continental Crush, uh, which when it holds the Rocky MZ, it allows it to use a big, big rock move. And that Gastrodon, oh, well, there was an Arcanine there uh, a second ago, uh, but that must be painful. But Garchomp can take it very well because yeah. it does resist the rock. Um, and it's got very good defense in its, on its own. Uh, meanwhile, the Sandstorm is going to do uh, only damage to Arcanine because of all these ground and rock types on the field. So now Garchomp is, is uh, well, in a pretty good position. It's pretty pretty much free to Earthquake if uh, Marcus got Celestina in the back and uh, it would be a pretty hard read for Barish to, to press the White God button and to press, for example, Will-O-Wisp. And then uh, Garchomp may still use its uh, set yeah, yeah. crystal to fire off a single uh, targeting uh, range, ground, yeah. ground move, and that that now comes down to uh, the ground move Marcus is choosing. He's pretty much free to fire off at least one. Yeah, uh, Marcus is actually. I think the way Marcus wins this matchup is by playing a lot more offensively uh, than he would usually prefer to play anyway. Uh, but we do see the withdrawal of the Arcanine from Barish end of the field and in favour of that Celestina. Uh, Marcus nodding his head there. Maybe he's expecting that himself. We do see a double switch from Barish side. So we had two double switches in uh, in two turns from opposing players. The Tapabulu does come in in favour of the Gigalith, setting up the Grassy Surge, allowing it, uh, allowing the Tapabulu but not the Celestia to recover. We just see a Protect, not wasting the, the Tectonic Rage on the Celestia, but we just see the Toxic go into the Tapu Bulu, which 
Yeah, I think this is going to be a bit of a, a long battle with uh, Toxic and Celestino <laughs> around. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Barish totally expected an earthquake coming. Uh, that's why the two switch-ins came. Tapapulo is is not a, doesn't want to face Deck Archam at all. Uh, no. uh, there is Poison Chap on the line, and uh, pretty good read from Marcus. The protect was safe play. Uh, Gastron fired off a uh, Toxic into the Bulldog's Law, which was pretty good play. Uh, it's they're both thinking yeah. in long term. They're both thinking of that long game, but in this situation, I can't see Marcus making any other play other than poison jabbing the Tapu Bulu and switching the Gastron in for a Tapu Coco. But maybe Barish can read that and punish that, but how would he do that? Well, s start doing Celestina things. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Set up the substitute and uh, yeah. see, see where it goes from there. Yeah, absolutely. E either substitute or start leech seeding right, right from the front. Yeah, from the get-go. Um, but we do see the Tabibulu withdrawing, not wanting to take a big poison jab from the uh, guard shop. The Gigalith is going to come in. It's going to take barely any damage from the uh, poison jab itself. We do see the Gastron come out uh, in favor of the Arcanine, actually, and not the Tapu Koko, like I presumed it was going to be. But w but the Intimidate is going to be quite big there. It's going to lower the attack on the Gigalith and the uh, uh, and the Celestina. Maybe Marcus was covering for that option, but we do see the poison jab there, and it's not going to do very much damage at all to that Gigalith. No, he got he got huge. Oh, oh and poison. gets poison. Barish this might be huge later on. Ba yeah. But Barish tries to set up a long-term game right now with sub and defensive switches, and gets punished by that poison. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, this might be actually a bit of an unfortunate situation for Marcus because the uh, the substitute did just go up and his only way of really dealing with it is with the Arcanine and protects and mo protects from the Celestealer will be dangerous. Um, but the Arcanine would probably possibly also want to, you know, willow the Gigalith, but now it can't because it's poison. Absolutely, absolutely. Have we already seen the tectonic range from Garchomp coming out. We have not seen a tectonic range. That could happen as well onto the Gigalith. Absolutely. If Garchomp decides to go for the sap move into the Gigalith slot and Arcanine decides to break this up with a with a uh, fire type move, then it's open again. Yeah, very, very true. Um, Marcus does uh, input his move. We're just waiting on Barish to choose what he's going to do. Barish is probably in a little bit of a fishier situation because uh, he doesn't want to lose the lead too, uh, too quickly. But we do see the Technonic Rage and no switches at all. The Technonic Rage is going to activate onto that guard shot, probably going to be targeting that Gigalith. We did not see a Protect, so this is going to be a fully powered Technonic Rage. Uh, unless, has the guard shop switched out since it's Intimidate? I don't think so, but, uh, oh, yes it did actually. Uh, but we're going to see the Technonic Rage onto this Gigalith and it's going to do how much damage? Is it going to knock out? Yes, yeah. it is going to knock out. This oh. the, oh, with a critical <laughs> hit. I don't know whether that mattered or not. Barish is furrowing his brow again. Maybe it did matter. And we do see an easy flamethrower just to break that substitute. Yeah, absolutely. This was the safest play Marcus could do. Uh, and probably Barish didn't expect Marcus to just go for the obvious play. Yeah, well, we do see the leech seeds onto the guard shop. Celestila is going to try and do its thing, uh, but with the Arcanine facing down and looking angry, uh, it might be a little bit difficult. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Marcus is in the leading position right now, absolutely, no doubt. Uh, I wonder what Arcanine set is about. Maybe some will o -Wisp, maybe some Snarl, maybe even some Morning Sun for, for uh, healing back some health later on once the Sandstorm is down. And uh, Billa uh, Barris sends his own Arcanine in, firing off the uh, Intimidate and lowering Guard Chomps and Marcus's uh, Arcanine's attack. Yeah, but at this point the Guard Chomps damage has been done. It did go for that big Tectonic Rage to get the KO on the Gigalith. And, but the Guard Chomp ideally wants to be preserved so it can poison jab freely against the Tapu Bulu. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's going, we're going to see a switch out. Marcus does have two more Pokemon on back, including that Tapu Coco to reset the Electric Surge. Arcanine mean, uh, Marcus's Arcanine in the meantime can do some stuff to Celesteela as well to make sure that it, it takes at least some damage before setting up another substitute. Absolutely, absolutely. If if Arcanine's got Will-O-Wisp, this will be a good time to Will-O-Wisp the Celesteela before it uh, sets up the sub. Uh, though it gets half back every time it, it finds someone to Leech Seed. This is a tough situation for Barris since he cannot damage Marcus's Pokemon a lot. 
he has to focus on defensive play, but uh, always always has to take some damage. Yeah, but we just see the Gatron switch in for the Garchomp, resetting the Leech Seed and the Intimidate. And we do see the Flamethrower onto the Celestia doing a lot more damage than I thought it was going to do. Why is Flamethrower doing more damage and then Volt Switch is not doing quite as much? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we do see the Arcanine get poisoned and the Leech Seed onto the Arcanine. That Arcanine is going to be taking a lot of residual damage this turn. Yeah. Um, while the sand Sandstorm does subside, so maybe not quite as much as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that Flamethrower has been a bit underestimating. Now Celestina gets half back uh, through Leech Seed and Leftovers and uh, stands a second Flamethrower easily. Uh, depending on how well Gastrodon is trained into Special Attack, it may even stand a Scald as well uh, if Marcus decides to, to uh, target down the Celestina. But still, still Barish is still in a pretty tough situation. He cannot damage Again, Marcus is Pokemon a lot. He still has to focus on defensive play, and this is what Marcus is probably capitalizing on. Yeah, Marcus definitely does have the advantage in terms of how, flex how flexibly he can use his offensive moves, while Barish is pretty much restricted to defensive plays. But defensive plays usually tend to beat the offensive plays, so Marcus really has to make sure he doesn't make he he you know doesn't play too obviously doesn't play too safely. I think he really has to go for for, for big moves at this point. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But well. we are going to see the time slowly run out for Marcus uh, while they both pick their moves still. But we see the Arcanine just go straight for the Flamethrower onto the Celestia. We don't even see a protected for any potential recovery. But it's not going to quite knock out. Are we going to see a Morning Sun from Banished <laughs> yeah. Arcanine? That one's an, in, an interesting one, certainly. Uh, it's going to recover all of its health all the way up to full. But is this Celestia in range of... It? Oh, gosh, I don't avoid the attack, which is kind of big. But well, a score that isn't going to be enough. No, it's oh. not into the Celestia slot. That may have been a little bit of a mistake. Whoa, 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 that leech seed miss was kind of big, big yeah. kind of big. Imagine, imagine two active leech seeds are recovering health for Celestia, being able to protect the next turn. Yeah. Thinking about it, Marcus actually made a fantastic play by flamethrowing the Celestia because there was nothing Barish could really do against the, uh, the flamethrower onto that slot. If he switched into Tapu Bulu, the Tapu Bulu was probably either going to go down, especially because it, I believe it, it has been toxic uh, by the uh, by the Gashadon at one point. Um, but speaking of toxic, the, the poison damage is going to start stacking more and more and more. The grassy yeah. terrain does leave, so uh, there's not going to be any recovery from grassy terrain this turn. No, oh, absolutely, and and I wonder if we are going to see some some interesting new fire moves like burn up with an interesting um, mechanic, uh, which takes away your typing, meaning that afterwards you do not have a typing. Yeah. Uh, this would be interesting because uh, then Arcanine may stand some some uh, skulls uh, aimed at itself better, uh, being able to morning sun up. So we see a switch from the Arcanine on Marcus's end. That's not, it might have been a little bit of an odd play because there was nothing really that Barish was doing uh, from his own Arcanine to prevent uh, any sorts of flamethrower. But we do see the Arcanine going for the um, uh, for the Morning Sun again to recover most of its health back. Uh, meanwhile, Leech Seed onto the Gashadon this time. <laughs> this time it does connect finally. Uh, while Gashadon is free to go for any move at once, what do we see? We do see a score onto the Arcanine slot yet again. Why He's ignoring that Celestia, and I don't know if that is the correct play to make. I'm, I'm not sure neither, but uh, I learned that I, that I shouldn't question Marcus because he, got <laughs> he, he, he obviously got a plan, uh, and if we don't see it, uh, it's still there, mm. and uh, I doubt he's he's ignoring Celestia for no reason. He got his reason, and he's probably trying to take down that Arcanine to take care of Celestia later on with Tapu Koko. Yeah, that's very very true. Tapu Koko is going to do, be doing a lot of damage uh, with any move, electric move, really, whether it be the Thunderbolt or the Volt Switch. But Barish can, you know, do a very good uh, Tapu Bulu defensive switching right now. Absolutely, absolutely. I wonder if we are going to see it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Marcus is taking some time, but we do, yeah, we do see yeah. the Celestia switch into the Tapu Bulu. So a Volt switch onto that slot is a very safe move from Marcus, yeah, yet again. Uh, 
the Tubber Buddha hasn't taken quite as much damage as I thought he had already taken, um, but we are going to see the Gashagon switch out as well to reset the poison damage in favour of the Arcanine. I like that play a lot. It's going yeah. to intimidate the Arc uh, Barish Arcanine yet again and intimidate the Tapu Bulu, which is quite big as well. Uh, do we see a Volt Switch? We do see a Volt Switch into the Tapu Bulu. It's going to do minuscule damage, but it's uh, it's the switch that really matters here. Uh, well, Yoshi, uh, well, Marcus Stratter does have the um, choice of what to switch into. Does he switch into his Guard Chomp, which is now you know relatively safe, yeah. or does he switch back into his Gastrodon to try and you know chip as much onto these uh, onto uh, the opposing Pokémon as possible? Well, I guess as far as I know, Marcus is going to go for Guard yeah. Chomp because he always goes. Gastrodon doesn't does, doesn't do anything for the game. Yeah, absolutely wonderful Will-O-Wisp onto that, uh, uh, well, not a great Will-O-Wisp from Marius then because the Arcanine did switch in um, to take that Will-O-Wisp. And we see the poison damage on Arcanine. Yeah, we see the typical poison damage onto the Arcanine, onto the Tapu Bulu as well. We're also going to see recovery on the grassy terrain. So... We are up. Arcanine and Guard Jump on Marcus's side versus Arcanine and Tapipulu on uh, Barish's side. We all know that Guard Jump is able uh, to poison jab into the pool slot. Okay, that's it. Um, that's interesting. I mean, the, the Tapu Bulu is going to be taking the poison jab. It's not. It, it's not going to be able to take the poison jab. But Celestina can switch back into that slot, uh, which is probably very safe play. But again, Arcanine can, you know, flame throw that slot as well. Yeah. So it's a bit. Of, it's a bit of a 50-50 in terms of Absolutely. what Barish can really do. I think it's it, the 50-50 is in Marx's favour though. Uh, but we see the Arcanine withdrawing uh, in favour of the Celestia. Maybe we're going to, maybe to preserve the Intimidate and to protect the Tapu Bulu. And we are going to see a Dragon Claw coming out into the Celestia slot, and probably a Flamethrower as well. Oh, a Flamethrower into that slot! What a marvelous! Either that was a prediction, or he just yeah. really wants to pick up the KO on the Arcanine. Barish has lost a, what essentially boils down to his win condition. The Woodhammer is going to go into the Garchomp to do a lot of damage, but uh, the Ruskin combined with the uh, Woodhammer recoil damage, combined with the poison <laughs> damage. Oh, but minus the uh, Citrus Berry. Um, but yeah, we'll. Yeah. The Tapu Bulu is just going to go down to a poison jab next turn, unless. Have we seen Protect on this Tapu Bulu? At all? <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how Barris plays. He he's always pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive. Uh, there's there, there's not much he can he can do to to get away with a win in this game. I think. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the Arcanine is going to come back in, but even with the Intimidate, the Tapu Bulu can't really take um, uh, the Poison Jab. Maybe the, I think the one out that Barish maybe does have is to protect Tapu Bulu and maybe goes for some extreme speeds just to make sure that, that Garchomp gets KO'd. Uh, but then again, Marcus can play, can play very, very safely for that. Absolutely. He's still got four Pokémon left, and the match was four <laughs> pointed. Congratulations, Marcus Stutter. Yeah, absolutely Whoa. excellently played by, Mar by Marcus. He did not lose a single Pokémon. A single yeah. Pokémon in that second game. He had. He was playing offensively, essentially, but Barish, I don't think he had the matchup really because he, he kept having to make defensive switches, which, you know, they were great switches and they were the correct play, objectively, but with the poor matchup, I don't think that quite worked out for him. No, no, but Matthias, I don't want to don't wanna talk too long about the match because That's we true. got a second match for you guys. Uh, we still got. We are going to be jumping into uh, into game three of another match, which is <laughs> Chuppercross versus Jamie Boyt. Now, Jamie Boyt recently won the Liverpool Regionals about uh, about a month ago, pretty much, um, and uh, he also did, you know, very. He, oh. Is it almost over? Or I don't know what the score is right now, but we do see the Porygon go to from one Ice Beam onto another Porygon. That does a lot more... Ice Beam from a Porygon does a lot more damage to another Porygon than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we've seen a download special attack boost from the Porygon, um, but the grassy terrain is already reco recovering a little bit. Uh, for a little bit more gap background, Chubba Cross also won the very first two VGC 2017 Premier Challenge in Brooklyn. Um, so he knows how to win tournaments in this format already. But we do see him switching the Tapu Coco to, um, you know, 
you know, Tapu Koko is going to be dangerous now at this point. Absolutely. And just for recap, Jamie got four Pokemon. Uh, and Chipper Cross already got knocked out one Pokemon. So there's Tapu Koko, there's Paragon 2, and there is one more left. Yes, and to uh, read off their teams, Jamie Boyt has a Kartana, a Marowak, a Pelipper, a Porygon 2, Raichu, Tapu Bulu, while Chopper Cross is, has the Tapu Koko, Gyarados, Garchomp, Celesteela, Porygon 2, and Gigalith. This is, like, again, uh, uh, nothing really surprising here. I think we had, had, a, had every single Pokemon on stream already. Yeah, that's true. And we do see the Kartana going out, but we see it definitely from the Tapu Koko. It's going to do a lot of damage to both the Pokemon, because Kartana doesn't have very much special defense despite yeah. it resisting the Fairy move. And we see the Wood Hammer onto the Tapu Koko. Does it quite knock out? Not quite without the Electric Terrain. Emperor Regan to use Toxic, and uh, should have better used Ice Beam <laughs> to knock out that Kartana, but that Toxic obviously doesn't affect Kartana. Yeah, that's true. Uh, the Ice Beam would have knocked it out, but yeah, I think that was quite a defensive switch uh, from Jamie Boyd's end. The Kartana doesn't really want to take any special moves, but yeah. the fact that he took a Toxic that turn is very, very big, because now it gets to, uh, you know, go for one of its very big moves. You know, Leaf Bait is huge, uh, Smart Strike does so much damage as well. Yeah, and he got Sacred Sword to, to hit uh, Poriga to super for super effective damage. Uh, Tapu Bulu is probably slower than uh, Tapu Koko from from Chupa Cross, so Tapu Koko is basically pretty free to go for another Dazzling Gleam. We have seen it with KO Kartana, that's why Jamie Boy decides to take it out and send in Porygon to yeah, the Porygon does, too, does come out in that slot instead. Uh, the attack does run on, on the Porygon, maybe not quite helping it, while the Tapu Bulu does go for the Protect. He's not switching the Tapu Bulu either to, uh, to reset the terrain. Um, you see the Dazzling Gleam into the Porygon, too. Does okay damage, but we do see the Life Orb onto Tapu Koko. It's going to stack up eventually, and Ice Beam onto the Tapu Bulu. It does protect itself. So quite a good switch for Jamie Boyd, but it doesn't bring him too much. No. There is still Tapu Bulu. Uh, fearing Daz Dazzling Gleam and uh, even a Thunderbolt and uh, not two Perigon 2s facing up each other uh, as we have seen in other matches who gets off a Toxic who gets off the first Toxic uh, who can reset the Toxic timer this happens when two Perigon 2s face each other yeah, and I suppose Jamie Boyd still has the advantage of this one because if he does manage to toxic the Porygon, uh, the Porygon won't be able to switch out because uh, Chipper does have the disadvantage in Pokemon number and he might have it even more. But we see the Sky Drop Tapu Koko takes up the Marowak. It's going to be... And it's not going to take the heavy ice beam from the Tapu Koko, from the Porygon 2. Excellent invade and the Trick Room. What are we seeing from this match? This is a really nice turn. Tapu Koko sky dropping Marowak. First time it was faster. Then Perigon 2 sets <laughs> yeah, up Trick Room and saying. now Tapu Koko will move last. So Marowak <laughs> cannot, cannot, can't move for two turns in a row. That's brilliant. The Marowak comes in thinking, oh, he's going to set up a Trick Room. I'm, I've got this in the bag, don't I? But now, uh, now he's, uh, he's been sent out and suddenly he's finding himself in the sky with Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is going to drop that thing down. It's not going to do too much damage, but Marowak is probably <laughs> not extremely pleased with that situation. Absolutely not. What but, a nice play. Yeah, but we see Jamie Boyd switch out the Polygon 2 in favour of the Kartana. Um, meanwhile, the Polygon 2 does go, go for its own Toxic into the Kartana. That's the second time we've seen Jamie Boyd make that prediction. <laughs> and we see Marowak take a little bit of damage from the Sky Drop while Tapu Koko takes more um, Life Orb damage. Um, now Marowak is free from the uh, Sky Drop, so Marowak can make any move it really wants. Absolutely. I'm really wondering if Marowak uh, or Porygon 2 is going to move first on the Trick Room. Both are naturally pretty slow. Uh, Porygon 2 might be able to damage Marowak. It might have some Shadow Ball or something. On the other side, it just can Ice Beam into the Kartana slot again. Uh, or trying to get a bit uh, more offensive and toxic that slot yeah. for a potential Porygon 2 switch in. 
Yeah, that's true. Now the Porygon does have the Toxic, which means maybe its offensive options are a little bit lower. You'd imagine that with a Toxic, it's also got Recover so that it can properly stall out. Chipper is taking his more time than Void to make his decision, but the Tapu Koko does get switched out in favor of the Gigalith. We've seen a, yet another Gigalith on the stream. Gigalith a lot more popular than I expected it to be. Same here. Yeah, uh, so we do see the sound stream go up, and the Kartana does go for Protect, not wanting to take any move, especially in the Trick Room. Meanwhile, Polygon is going to go for the Ice Beam onto the Kartana. The Kartana does Protect, and we see a big, big, big Flare Blitz. Into what slot do we see it on? We're going to probably see it onto the Polygon slot, because, yeah, you would not have... Oh, oh, wow, that does half damage. You would not have targeted the uh, Tapu Koko with the Flare Blitz, because I believe Shadow Bone would have knocked it out from that range anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. And just just for a recap again, Trick Room is still up. Yep. Uh Chipper Cross got Gigalith and Porygon 2 on the field. Jamie Boyd got Marowak and Kartana on the field. So Kartana is probably moving as very last Pokemon on the field right now. Gigalith is pretty much free to just throw a rock slide here and Porygon 2 is then just free to ice beam that Katana slot. Yeah, that's true, very true. Um, but the Marowak it does can take advantage from these last two turns of Trick Room. We saw how much the Flare Bits do to Porygon. Porygon 2 doesn't always carry the Protect. Uh, it can do, but it's not always very good. The Kartana does switch out. Obviously, the Trick Room doesn't quite favor it. And what are we going to see? Are we going to see the Marowak go for the KO on the... Now we see the Special Attack on the... We see a Protect from the Marowak. A little bit of an odd choice from uh, Jamie's then, as he could have picked up the KO on the Polygon, which would have been huge at this point of the game. Oh, I guess Gigalith would have been able to outspeed the Marowak. Maybe it's a, is it, is it a speed time between Marowak and Gigalith? I don't think so. I, don't, I think Gigalith is naturally uh, slower than Marowak, and therefore, uh, if trained correctly, the Gigalith uh, moves first in Trick from here. Yeah, okay, well, if that's the case, I mean, some people also like running a little bit of speed on their Marowaks, yeah. just to be cheeky and outspeed other Marowaks. <laughs> Not only, I've, I've, I've already seen some uh, Cholly's, Cholly Marowaks running yeah. around, so uh, creating own sets, own splits is the thing right now in an early meta game. That, that is cool, seeing how, how splits develop, how, how you train your Pokemon, uh, which nature you go for, and uh, we still got Trick Room up, and uh, Gigalith is once again free to fire off a strong Rock-type move, and Perigon 2 may, may get the KO then. We see the Rock Slide connecting on both targets, and it's going to knock out the Marowak. The final turn of Trick Room, maybe Boyd should have made some defensive switches instead of keeping both his Pokemon in. We do see Chappers Porygon recovering. What do we see from Jamie's uh, Porygon? Because if, if Jamie doesn't go for the... Uh, it's an Ice Beam onto the Porygon slot. Um, okay, because now the Porygon is going to go down to the Sandstorm because of the 8 HP it has remaining. Um, not, the very, not the most optimal plays for Jamie Boyd, I don't think. Um, Twisted remains just yeah. return back to normal. So now the Gigalith is outside of Trick Room, but I think the damage has been done at this point. Absolutely, absolutely. I wonder what Jamie Boy got in the back to turn the table around. Uh, Tapu Bulu obviously is able to dish out some huge damage, and Kartana, pro uh, once Grassy Surge is up and uh, Grassy Terrain is active, uh, those Leaf Blades from Kartana are hurting a lot. Yeah, the Leaf Blade will hurt, the Wood Hammer from Tapu Bulu will hurt, but at the same time, Chopper does have the Tapu Koko in the back to get rid of the grassy terrain so that they don't hurt quite as much. And this, I mean, this Gigalith, maybe with the electric terrain up, might be able to take the grass moves. Maybe, yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's pretty hard uh, t to tell what the safest play would be, Jamie Boyd is probably trying to uh, double up and to use the Giga. Uh, if he did double up on the Giga, <laughs> it might have been a bad play at this point because we do see the Protect. But we just see the Sacred Sword onto the Porygon. Is it going to knock out? It does knock out. It does. Which means the Tapu Bulu is free to go with, for whatever move it wants. Do we see one of those fancy Sword Stunts Tapu Bulus we saw from uh, Ashton Cox uh, back in round two earlier? But we just see a simple Horn Leech right into the Protect. Um, yeah, I think that was a correct play on Tripper's end because now, uh, now the Tapu Koko does come in on a free switch and it is going to be able to probably knock out both of these Pokemon yeah. with the electric. We have seen Dazzling Gleam doing huge amount of damage 
to Cartana and Tapapulu and uh, Tapikoko is faster. So I think Chippa is going to seal the deal with a strong Dazzling Gleam. Mm, yeah, the Dazzling Gleam is going to, I think, if not knock out, leave it just about enough HP for Sandstorm to really finish uh, you know, finish the deal. Uh, I don't know if the Tapu Bula has any other recovery options apart from the grassy terrain, which is now no longer there. Uh, but we do. what are we going to see? I, I don't think Jamie can really recover from this position. It's really hard. It's, it's like really hard. Uh, uh, it depends on what, what Chipper presses. If he decides to go for a, a discharge, for example, and a white guard uh, on Gigalith, but the discharge is more powerful than the Dazzling Leap yeah. onto the Cartana, so probably takes it out as well. I well, we do just see a simple protect from the Tapu Bulu, uh, while a Dazzling Leap does go into the Cartana. Will it be able to knock out the Cartana? I think that's the big question on everyone's mind. Yeah. Yes, just about, just about. The Cartana <laughs> does go down. Um, Tapu Koko does take the life orb damage. I probably will fade to the Sandstorm. It will probably fade to the Sandstorm. I think that's kind of a big one. Oh, the Sandstorm the ran sandstorm out. Went out. <laughs> yes, on the very <laughs> final turn of Sandstorm, um, the Sandstorm damage does not apply, so Tapu Koko would not end up uh, uh, fainting to the Sandstorm and meeting in a, uh, an untimely faint. Uh, but Chopper play this one uh, well. We only you know, joined this game three uh, quite late, but we do see the final sky drop just for, <laughs> just for the laughs. Uh, well, <laughs> Rockside goes into Tapu Bulu. I think that's actually probably objectively a very good play because now the Tapu Bulu can't move in front of the Gigalith. Or actually, maybe, maybe it can. But I don't think it, it passes it could, at this point. It could yeah. if it stands the sky drop, but it obviously doesn't. And Chippa takes the third game and uh, defeats Jamie Boyd in three good games. Yeah, very well done by Chopper Cross. Uh, we're going to be having an interview with the both of winners of